In a mere three years after Shandao's arrival in Chang'an, his teachings had spread far and wide. Countless numbers of people were moved to adopt Pure Land practice. Imagine standing on the streets of Chang'an at the time. One could hear people reciting Amitabha's name almost everywhere. This explains why, even in modern times, people in China know Amitabha's name from the time they are small. It must have something to do with Master's wide appeal and his teachings being transmitted through the generations. Because of Shandao's popular and compelling Dharma teaching, many people stopped eating meat. Naturally, when the butchers lost the majority of their income, they had no choice but to close their businesses. Some did so willingly, others did not. At the time, there was a butcher in Chang'an named Jing. Because Master Shandao's teaching about Amitabha recitation had caused many people to adopt a vegetarian diet, Butcher Jing resented him deeply. With a knife in hand, he entered Shandao's monastery with the intention of killing him. However, when he finally saw the master, all of his cold hatred melted away like ice in the sunlight. Feeling deeply ashamed, Jing fell to the floor, prostrated himself before the master, and repented of his evil intentions. Master Shan Dao knew that Jing's karma was ripe to hear the Dharma, and he began to teach the former butcher. In order to dispel his doubts and arouse his aspiration for rebirth in the land of bliss, Master pointed to the west and manifested a vision of the pure land. Jing immediately repented of his past karmic evil and aspired to rebirth in the land of bliss. Leaving the monastery, he climbed a tall tree while reciting the name of Amitabha Buddha. Facing west, he then fell from the tree and died. Onlookers saw an emanation Buddha lead his spirit out of the top of his head. The deliverance of Amitabha Buddha is always present, everywhere. It attaches no preconditions and does not discriminate between monastics and laity, or good and bad. Anyone who recites Amitabha's name and aspires to rebirth in the Pure Land will achieve it. Master Shan Dao was able to touch others with his compassion. On seeing his face, people with virtue shed all their negative intentions. Over the years, Master Shan Dao continued his Dharma activities from his base at Wu Zhen Monastery. His erudition and talents as a Dharma propagator were unparalleled, but he was also known for his calligraphy, paintings, poetry, and music. He made use of monetary offerings to copy more than 100,000 fascicles of the Amitabha Sutra and to create more than 300 portraits of the Pure Land. Look at those numbers. What a miracle! His written works, in praise of Pratyupana and in praise of the rites of rebirth, are long poems about the Pure Land teaching. The lines are sincere and unadorned, simple and graceful. People who read his works felt deeply impressed by the power and insight they contained. His other work, in praise of Dharma practices, was chanted annually during a special Dharma service. With incense smoke wafting through the air and melodious Buddhist chant filling the temple, the crowd must have perceived the grandeur and solemnity of the Dharma. No doubt, 
Those in attendance were moved to self-reflection and tears as a result of this event orchestrated by Master Shan Dao. Perhaps his greatest achievement in the arts was the carving of the great Buddha statue at the Longmen Grottoes in Luoyang. The statue was made at the wish of Emperor Gao Zong, and its construction was funded and organized by Empress Wu Zetian. The project was overseen by Master Shan Dao under imperial appointment. To this day, the Great Buddha is the premier example of Chinese Buddhist sculpture from any era. Without question, Master Shan Dao's greatest legacy was his Dharma teaching. It was through his own deep experience of the Dharma that he clarified the intent of both Shakyamuni Buddha and Amitabha Buddha. But it was his skill in delivering the Dharma to the masses that made him a popular and beloved teacher. It was said that, because of the Master, countless people became believers and Chang'an was filled with the sounds of Amitabha recitation. Not long before he passed away, Shan Dao was in the monastery drawing a portrait of the Pure Land. Suddenly, he hurried to finish it. When asked why, he replied, I am about to be reborn in the Land of Bliss. I can only remain another two or three days. When the time came, Shan Dao developed a mild illness. He closed the door of his room and passed away in good spirits. His body was soft, his face in a normal condition. For a long while, music and an unusual fragrance permeated the room. Master Shan Dao had lived 69 years until the third month and 14th day of 681. Upon hearing of the master's passing, Emperor Gao Zong grieved deeply and neither gave audiences nor handled the affairs of state for five days. According to the record, the weeping that saw him off was enough to topple a city and the streets were emptied because of him. Only on three occasions has there been mourning on such a scale. Master Hua Yun, who followed and assisted Shan Dao for over a decade, chose a scenic spot to erect a pagoda and tablet to commemorate the abundant virtues of his teacher. This is the Chongling Pagoda. Next to the pagoda, he built a monastery named Xiangji. Let's take a look at one of Master Shan Dao's well-known poems. The Advocacy Gatha says, As our skin turns wrinkled and our hair white, we see ourselves growing decrepit and senile. Even if we are rich and blessed with heirs, we cannot escape the ravages of aging. You may be happy in a thousand ways, but death always comes in the end. The sole path ahead is to practice, reciting only the name of Amitabha Buddha. Such wise and sincere lines can be found everywhere in the Master's works. In his collection on rebirth in the land of bliss, Master Lian Qi revealed how profoundly he was touched by Master Shan Dao's lofty virtues, which he greatly admired. He writes, Master Shan Dao is said to be an incarnation of Amitabha Buddha. The meticulousness and discipline of his own practice and his extensive efforts to benefit others have been passed down through the generations. They powerfully instill faith in our hearts. 
if not Amitabha himself, he was surely a bosom friend of Avalokiteshvara and Samantabhadra. Master Ying Guang, in his writings, lavished praise on Shan Dao's wisdom and special power. Master Shan Dao was an incarnation of Amitabha Buddha. He possessed ample powers and great wisdom. In expounding the Pure Land teaching, he did not stress the abstract. He emphasized simplicity and clarity as he taught people how to practice. His teaching on exclusive and mixed practice has immense benefits. Exclusive practice means that we venerate only Amitabha with our bodies, recite only his name with our mouths, and keep him alone in our minds. Every person who does this will be reborn in the western land of bliss, without exception. Mixed practice means engaging in the practices of various schools simultaneously, then dedicating the merit towards rebirth in the pure land. Because the practitioner lacks a pure and focused mind, benefits will be hard to come by. As a result, only one or two in a hundred, three or four in a thousand, achieve rebirth. This is the honest truth, which will never change. Master Shandao was a pivotal figure in the history of Pure Land Buddhism. Pure Land teachings in China can be divided into two categories, those of the Sui and Tang dynasties, and those of the Song and Ming dynasties. The Sui Tang teachings refer to the tradition established by Venerable Master Shan Dao and counts Masters Nagarjuna, Vashubandhu, Tan Luan, and Dao Chuo as its patriarchs. It emphasizes the exclusive, single-minded, and lifelong practice of reciting Nyanfo, or the name of Amitabha. Namo Amitabha Buddha. According to Master Shan Dao, reciting Amitabha's name in this way is the karma of assurance for rebirth in the Pure Land. It is a simple, easy practice that persons of any status, ability, or background can accomplish. For those who practice according to this tradition, as the saying goes, 10 out of 10, a hundred out of a hundred will achieve rebirth in the Pure Land. In other words, anyone who practices properly can be reborn in the Land of Bliss. Indeed, even in the present life, he or she can already be considered a member of the Pure Land Sacred Assembly. This is the Pure Land School of the Sui and Tang dynasties, the Shan Dao lineage. The Song Ming form of Pure Land teaching runs from the Northern Song through to the Ming and even the Qing dynasties. Though it is a part of the Pure Land heritage, its substance is different. Due to political upheavals and a Buddhist persecution following the Tang dynasty, the pristine tradition of Master Shan Dao was lost in China. Severed from its root, the Pure Land teaching began to incorporate elements from the Tiantai, Huayan, and Chan schools. Thus, Song Ming Pure Land has a philosophical content that seems rich and weighty, as it has drawn on the thought of the schools of the Sacred Path, that is, the non-Pure Land schools. However, it also added various conditions and stipulations that make ordinary practitioners uncertain about their ability to achieve the ultimate goal of rebirth in the Pure Land. So, this is why we borrow the Tang architectural style. It reminds us of our founder, Master Shan Dao, and perfectly embodies the ideals and aspirations of our Dharma school. 
Next time, we will take a closer look at Master Shandao's teaching, as well as a deeper look inside Hongyan Monastery. Until then, goodbye. Namo Amitofo.